and welcome to another edition of Carpool Reactions. I'm JD. Crawl out from under that rock you're hiding under, and I'll drive this truck up your ass. How colorful. I'm Nils, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I was going to say, as you can see, I have a guest with me today. I have got the incredibly talented vocalist from Dynasty and Amaranth. I've got Nils Moline with me here today, who clearly spends a lot more money on hair products than I do. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you would be surprised <laughs> how, little, jealous, how little I spend, man. For, I oh, even... wow. <laughs> I would not have guessed at all. I just have no. to clear this up right off the bat since this question pops up so many times. I don't even fucking use shampoo, and maybe that's the secret. Don't use shampoo, folks. Free advice. Y'all hear that? <laughs> don't use shampoo. Wow. I'm jealous, man. I'm sorry. I'm just, you know, mine's getting kind of long. I'll cut it soon. <laughs> I, see, I can see that. Nils, I know your time is valuable. Number one, thank you for being here. I know you got a lot going on with the, your new album. Amaranth is coming up in a couple of months. So uh, go ahead and get right to it. Now, I'm not going to ask you anything about your music. I'm sure you're tired of answering the questions of who your influences are and self-producing your own albums and all that other good stuff. We're not going to touch that. Right, right. I want to know, if you were a superhero, what would your power be? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, um, I guess, like, the power of flight, to be able to fly everywhere is kind of tempting. But I guess the most useful would be to be invisible or something like that, or just insanely fast or whatever. You can pull a, a lot of shit off if you're invisible. <laughs> you can do a lot of fun stuff. So I'll, I'm, I'll go with that superpower. Okay, invisibility is kind of interesting for somebody who's a front man. <laughs> That's correct. I would not have picked that at all. Well, yeah, but it's the most fun one, I guess. Okay, cool. Just kind of turn it off and turn into predator invisibility. I like that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> How about this one? If aliens from another planet landed tomorrow and told you that they don't have music where they come from, no concept of it whatsoever. What song do you play for them first? Wow. Uh, first song that you play to aliens. Well, mm. they've never heard of music. Then I would play them. Uh, I would play them Gates of Babylon with Rainbow. Nice. That's start where you ought off. to start. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, man, we're off to a good start. Same scenario. Those same aliens ask you to come back to their planet. Do you go? Why not? You got you to gotta be a pioneer and explorer, so you got to take See, your chances. I would go. I would want to miss that. Well, that's the trick is you could be an explorer. You could be a lab rat. Right. You don't know which. So that's kind of okay. So you're 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 all you're already off. You're gonna explore and come back with some new stuff. That, that's awesome. Or maybe not come back at all. Who knows? But uh, it sounds pretty exciting to me. He's a go getter. That's for sure. I'll tell you <laughs> what, man. I I always get an interesting response to that, and everybody's the same way. Go for it. Yeah. Nils, if you were a wrestler, what is your entrance song? You ever watch wrestling? Um, not that much, but I, I'm, of course, familiar with the phenomenon. I said <laughs> we, we never had that. Uh, yeah, wrestling. Wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, that's a good question. It's got to be something that... you song. No, no. Uh, it's got to be no something that pumps you up. No fire sign for you. All right. <laughs> um, it's got to be something that pumps you up. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, I had a good song on top of my mind. Um... Hmm. You could enter with something like really majestic, like maybe Kashmir with Led Zeppelin or something like that, or you could go for something that's just extremely heavy or like Enter Sandman or something like that as well. A banger Word. like that. Yeah. yeah. Plus it's got that cool intro. Exactly. That's what it you means. Drag you got build build up intro for it. Nice. By the way, I noticed you and I have something in common. I saw your Instagram post where you had Hans Zimmer. That's right. my man. That's yes, my man. Indeed. <laughs> love it. Yeah. I love it. So, hey, good taste in music. So, I mean, uh, Hans Zimmer is like, uh, and uh, take these uh, modern day film composers like John Williams and Hans Zimmer. They're, they're really uh, the modern day equivalent of, of like the really big composers of, of all times, like Mozart, Beethoven, and stuff like that. So, exactly. they ought to get more credit than they even have today, I, I think. So, they're absolutely ingenious. 
especially Hans Zimmer. People don't realize how many movies he has scored. Like basically all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I hate it because the movie kind of didn't, it didn't fare that well and got a lot of criticism, but the score from man of steel was one of my favorite works of his. Right. Right. I, since I didn't really like that film, I, I haven't really checked out the score, but maybe, um, maybe I should do that. It's thanks it's for the tip. No, oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Niels, if you had your own talk show, who are your first three guests? All at the same time in the in the first episode. In the first or, show. Okay. Uh, I guess there are two ways to go about this. Either you go for like a, a purely egoistic personal reasons, like you put your favorite heroes there or whatever, or you try to create something interesting for the whole world to see. And uh, then I would, if I would go for the latter option, I would go for maybe like put some really historical figures there, like big thinkers like Abe, Abe Lincoln or something like that, Abraham Lincoln or Albert Einstein, because goddamn, that dude was smart. And, <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> and uh, you want to put him together with like a big philosopher like Abraham Lincoln or something like that. And, uh, or, and then uh, like a third guess, I guess you want to mix things up a little, like. Uh, a bit of a curveball, maybe put like a really funny comedian there that can spice things up. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody who's uh, inherently funny, like maybe uh, what about Will John Ferrell. John Cleese or yeah, or Ricky Thanks. Gervais or Will Ferrell? That's a good one. That's a really good one as well. Or just uh, just somebody that who's completely uh, like uh, off in terms of the other ones, like Jack Nicholson or somebody like that. Oh God, yes. I'm loving that, could, that could be an interesting talk show, I think. Oh, my God, yes. Especially if you brought them out one at a time and kept them all there. Yeah, and then they all sit there together at the end. Oh, my God. <laughs> that, that, yeah, I would watch that and watch yeah. the rerun. Yes. Yeah. Great stuff. Okay, I kind of just ruined my next question, but it was, it was going to be if you could meet anybody from history, who would right. it be? You can go as far back as you want. Oh, that's interesting. There are a lot you of characters. Can't pick any of the ones you just used. <laughs> All right, right. Well, uh, it depends. I mean, um, again, there's a lot of interesting people to choose from. <laughs> like, you would want to try to see what it's like if you could actually speak his language to sit down with a, a, a crazy guy like Genghis Khan or like an old Viking king or whatever. Or um, just sit down with... Uh, Socrates or Julius Caesar or whatever, like these really historical figures. But then again, I could also go personal and I would just sit down and, and talk to, um, I don't know, Ronnie Dio. That would be it for me. <laughs> You'd be good with that one? Yeah, yeah, I would. Okay. I like it. I like it. Genghis Khan kind of threw me off. That'd be, I mean, I, I'd have but, back you up. Know, you know, you want to start picking his brain, like who the... Who the fuck is this guy and what, what's going on up there? From afar. From afar, yeah. Like, <laughs> it would be like close to that, dude. Preferably put him in a cage first, and then you can start <laughs> picking his brain. Like Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I love it. I love it. Oh, my gosh, I love it. All righty. So, Nils, if you could get away with one crime, scot-free, what is it? <sighs> Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, would all you know? Like, uh, I would always be tempting to uh, to do like pull off a bank heist that is like totally Ocean's Eleven or something like that. Like y'all's Maybe, video, huh? Like the boomerang video. Oh yeah, that's right. You know, not not exactly for the money or anything like that, but more like to actually be able to pull it off, like a really elaborate heist, and uh, well, and preferably nobody would get hurt, nobody would get injured, or it wouldn't cause that much trouble. But that kind of that kind of stuff, and then you can look back on it and said, "Yeah, I pulled that shit off." Just just for the absolute <laughs> thrill, adrenaline, yeah, that the thrill so of the chase. Cool. That's now, the most would important it be? Thing. Would it be a bank robbery or just a full-blown heist that takes months to prep? It's got to be a heist. It's got to be, uh, yeah, months. We're talking months of preparation. And, okay. Yeah. And do you, uh, do you kill your 
comrades who help so no one could tell or do you <laughs> all do you live happily ever after i i I'd, I'd uh prefer to to stay out of killing my friends and, and or anybody <laughs> actually in general <laughs> but uh yeah no, I, I would do too. it oceans ocean style that would just uh, we're a team and we would pull it off or yeah no casualties like a, man all like stealth. a too fast too furious kind of thing i love it i love it i love it Nils, if you were about to go deaf in five minutes, you got time for one last song to hear that you're going to have stuck in your head for the rest of your life. Which one is it? God damn. These questions with I one song or, or one album or stuff like that is it's just insanely difficult. But um, no, that's okay. why I pick them. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, man. Um, I'd go for. Uh, since I was already mentioning Rainbow, I'll take another Rainbow Classic. I'll go with Stargazer. And I'll have those those keyboards, organ keyboards, towards the final crescendo echoing in my brain for eternity. Nice. And I would be that pretty satisfied be with there. that. Yeah. Nice. I love it. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I've noticed that um, artists I've interviewed, they tend to enjoy this more than the same old shit over and over. And... Nils, just between me, you, and the fence post, nothing irks me more than when I watch an interview and they ask questions that you could Google. Right, right. I mean, uh, it's all part of the part of the job, basically, and comes with the territory that you have to. Uh, sometimes you do 10, 15 interviews in one day, and, and a lot of the people are gonna pretty much ask the same kind of questions. So you. <laughs> You basically answer the same thing over and over again, and of course that gets tedious. But it, it comes with the territory, and, and oh, yeah. And uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun too, and, and really refreshing to just do something completely different. It always yeah. is. By the way, I agree with that one guy that interviewed you a couple months ago when he said "Hologram" was the strongest track off the new album. I thought right. the same thing. That one really stood out to me, and not just because of how different it is, but it's structured to where it really shows off your range. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. No more music. <laughs> right. No more music. But yeah, I thank you very much. I I like that track too. Uh, we're gonna do a music video for it. So yeah. I know. I heard. I'm excited. Yeah. Ah, I can't wait till man. Things are gonna get back to normal soon. And I'm gonna tell you this before I get back to my last question. I'm gonna ask you. Great music is helping us all get through this. So right. thank you for that. Of course. And uh, thanks to everybody out there who's making music. I mean, it it is something for for everybody who has been staying in quarantine and, and not being able to do stuff. I mean, what better way to, to get through the day than to listen to music? I, I know it works for me and I'm sure it works for a lot of people. So. Absolutely. And I'm excited about the new album coming out from Amaranth in a couple of months. And uh, yeah. links for the both of them are down there. If y'all haven't bought those, go ahead and get on that with the quickness. That's true. Last question. Maybe two. Depends right. on how much time you got. I got some time. I always get a different answer to this one. Who plays you in a movie about your life? Oh, God damn it. Um, mm -mm. It's a little difficult to, uh, to say because I don't know. I don't know any any actor that's, that's really my my age or, or anything like that. And uh, all right, I'm going to give you a different answer. I'll play myself. That's the one everybody <laughs> does. They, they think about some Everybody does they, that. Yes, and they say, okay. who better? Like Lena from Infected Rain, she said that. She was like, who better to play me than me? I've been right. through it. <laughs> That's totally true, though. So, yeah, I was seeing if you'd go that route, too, because I lied. Yeah, everyone says that. Everyone ultimately says themselves. Okay, right. But then I should maybe go for something different. But I just can't think of anybody... Um, um, maybe like uh, somebody that you don't know about, like a young and hungry up and coming kind of actor or something further down the I, line. I don't know. I like it. I like it. Cause yeah, you've still got a long ways to go, my man. So yeah, we're going to have a whole story here in quite some time from now. So it probably will be an up and coming actor that we don't know yet. Yeah. True that. One more, one more. You get a time machine, one round trip. Do you go back in time? Do you go into the future? Uh, the thing is, I know that the past exists. I don't know if the future exists. You don't know what happens in 50 years. You don't know what happens in 100 years. 
And of course, it would be kind of interesting to see where everything's at. But at the same time, it's really fucking tempting to to go the opposite direction. But since uh, we're uh, doing the pioneering kind of uh, go the distance mentality, I'll, I'll go into the future. And if there's nothing there, then so be it. It was worth a shot. I'll go a uh, hundred years into the future. Let's see what's going on there. Okay. Now, would you be tempted to change something? If you came across something, like if you go to the future and you see something that just you cannot live with, you're like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. I got to do something about it. Would you be tempted to change it when you came back? Uh, no, because, uh, well, this is all philosophical stuff, but the, the snowball effect on that could be potentially huge. And if you change one thing because you think it, it, it's terrible, then you might end up causing something else that is even worse. And, uh, for example, if you, uh, if you would go back in time to try to stop a, a, a big war or a big catastrophe or something like that, uh, I mean, you potentially would try to go back in time to stop World War II from happening. Who knows if that might instead cause something even worse to happen. So uh, no, no, uh, no fucking with past events, no fucking with future events. Um, <laughs> just eyes but, on. Yeah, just going to be uh, spectating and watching and see what's going on. Yeah, that's what I would do. I would be tempted to change something. But you have all seen the films. It all it all goes bad when you try to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You try and change something and you end up screwing then, something up. Or you end up causing it in the first place. Yep. Because that's the paradox with time travel. See, that's what I would have to do is I would have to, if I did have a time machine with one round trip, I would say, here you go. I don't want it. I can't do it. <laughs> It'd be too tempting. Give it to somebody else. Like, I'd go back to 1969 and bet the farm on the Jets or something. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I would do something like that. Yeah, well, that's actually a good idea, too. When you know, uh, when you know like, some, something to bet on and you know the results beforehand and you just bet a shitload of money and make, make a good buck there, maybe that's the safest option. Yeah, that might work. That might work. No, because then economically you might ruin somebody else in the process. Right, right. Somebody who is important and then the whole economy collapses in a way that it never would have anyway so yeah nils we can't have any fun <laughs> it's a uh, slippery slope time Definitely. traveling be careful when you're time traveling people oh did you see that meme where it's got a uh, marty mcfly and doc and he's saying whatever you do don't go to 2020 <laughs> <laughs> yeah seen plenty of uh, similar memes with, with oh, this God. year yeah oh god yeah it is what well, it is but nils hey I thank you so much for joining me today. I know our viewers are going to really enjoy this. Hopefully the fans will as well. And man, best of luck with the album, Amaranth's album coming out. It's an exciting year for you, despite yeah. everything that's going on. So absolutely looking forward to seeing you back on tour very, very soon. I will knife my way front row center. My man. And Hey, I'll go ahead and sign us off here. So leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'm JD. I'm Nils. And always be yourself. Everybody else is already taken. Don't be a knave. <laughs>